we're back here with our final segment of Curator's Corner, very special Curator's Corners from the 2015 NRA annual meetings and exhibits here in Nashville, but there's one problem. Phil Schreier, you said you were leaving, but you're still here. What happened? I uh, Evidently, I was mistaken. Oh, well, well, <laughs> welcome back, Phil Schreier. Always glad to have Always you. Always glad to be And back. welcome back to Ashley Lubinsky with the Cody Firearms Museum. Now, Ashley, you're killing me now. So before you had this wonderful Winchester model 1866 Yellow Boy, this is the coolest M1 Grand I think I ever saw. What, what do we have here? Well, one of the things that, that I liked about the firearms we had was it kind of really showcases the diversity of Winchester. Um, but this is an M1 Grand, obviously, Winchester made, gas port, and it was made for presentation to General Patton. Oh, jeez, killing me. <laughs> Wow. Just a, just a curveball there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just Jeez. went right over there. Okay. Can I just look at it for a while? Oh, you keep talking. Okay. I'm just going to okay. drool here. That's good. As long as you don't get it on the gun. <laughs> no, it'll fine. be fine. Um, so this, yes, this was made for presentation to General Patton. Unfortunately, it was made later in his life, right before he passed away in 1944. But it's a, it's a beautiful chrome-plated M1. And it's kind of perfect because General Patton called it the greatest battle implement ever to right. <laughs> When you talk about... Uh, endorsements, celebrity endorsements. <laughs> yes. That's all life is about anymore, right? Yeah. When you're looking at firearms, you've got Theodore Roosevelt talking about the Winchester 95 saying this is big medicine for lions. <laughs> and you've got George Patton saying the M1 Grand is the finest battle implement ever devised. Those are the two greatest pull quotes in the history of firearms. Right. Total. Yes. And Patton's is one, and that's the gun he's talking about. Wow, and that's it. Gorgeous. So tell us a little, how did this come about, this presentation? So this gun was actually um, a part of the Winchester Arms Collection, which means that uh, Winchester decided that they wanted to create a chrome-plated Winchester M1 for him. So it was, a, it was a Winchester kind of devised idea. And so they went about and did it with the chrome plating. So just kind of add a little bit of pizzazz for it. Yeah, a little. And, yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> and, and so it was basically came out of their minds to do it for him. And so they, they cool. made it happen. And, you know, it was um, unfortunately since he, since he passed away in 45, you know, it ended up with the, with the Winchester Arms Collection, like the last firearm we talked about, and ended up in Cody, fortunate enough for us. Well, you, you know what, Ashley, and, and Phil and I talk about this all the time, it's, it is fortunate because it's so great at places like the NRA Museums or at the Cody Firearms Museum that these treasures, these national treasures, can be shared with everyone. It's great. It, had it, been, it was presented to, to General Patton and was stayed in collection, but now it's available available for everyone to come and see, either here on Curator's Corner, on online, or to go there to the Cody Firearms Museum and see them, because this is just stuff that, you know, we get, you know, we got to get the word out on this. It's, it's just something you got to come and see. So now, the Winchester Model 1866 Yellow Boy we talked about last week, never been fired. What about this one? This one has also never been fired. You know, wow. the cool thing ab about the Winchester Arms Collection was because it was a couple of things. It was a competitive collection, which means that there were over 30 major manufacturers represented in it. They basically were buying out the competitor to see how it worked, you know? And so you've got that, but then you've also got representative models that have never been fired because they pulled it and they put it there. A and this one, you know, obviously was never fired because of how late in the game right. it came in and a lot of presentation, you know, just go along that way. But it's nice to see something so pristine and especially, you right. know, with the other gun that, that we saw, you know, just impeccable, you know. So take a minute. You can do this, Phil, or you can hand it off to the other curator. Explain to folks how the, what about this rifle makes it such a great, you know, a great rifle, as General Patton said. There's some unique things about it. Well, it was the first, it was the first infantry firearm that was semi-automatic. That was a standard shoulder arm for an entire army. Uh, everybody else is still mostly running around with bolt-action rifles. This is the next step forward in technology. It fires eight shots from an in-block clip. It has a uh, gas, gas operating rod that just ejects the, uh, the last round. That had the famous ping as the, uh, the in-block clip ejects from the gun. Um, and it's 30 out six. What's not to like? It's, it's just a very effective gun. I've literally been uh, out on quote unquote maneuvers with these. Saw, saw a guy drop one in a tank track that was covered with icy water. Pulled it up by its uh, by its sling, shouldered the gun, and it fired five shots quick. Granted, they were blank rounds, but right. still it functioned. Water coming out of every corner and orifice of the gun 
but it was working just like that. It, it just works. Yeah, when it was big, heavy, but with that round, as some folks, you could reach out and touch someone with it. Oh, that yeah. Thing. Yeah, it's a very effective, very effective, accurate, very dependable firearm. We won two world wars with it, so I think it's got a pretty good batting average. Pretty good. <laughs> it's doing all right. All right, well, Ashley, thank you so much thank for coming you. and sharing your knowledge and, and these firearms with us. Thank you, Phil, for putting this together. So, once again, give us some more information about how can get people get more information about Cody Firearms Museum. Well, you can check us out on our social media, um, Facebook, we're just Cody Firearms Museum. On Twitter, we're at Cody Firearms. And then you can also check us out at centerofthewest.org slash explore firearms. And the NRA museums, we don't forget about those, Phil. Well, we're, we're, uh, we're on the internet 24-7 at nramuseums.com. You can visit us at our uh, headquarters museum in Fairfax commemorating its 80th anniversary this year. Awesome. And uh, at, uh, in Fairfax, right off of Route 66 and intersection Route 50, and also the Bass Pro Springfield, Missouri site at the Bass Pro headquarters store for the National Sporting Arms Museum in Springfield, Missouri. Again, uh, the museums are open seven days a week. There's no admission charge, and there's plenty of free parking. Beautiful. Thank you, folks, for being on Curious Corner. I'm not going to tell you what's coming up next because I Phil always surprises me. So you tune in and be surprised as well. Thank you, Phil. Thank, Thank you, Ashley. Thank you very much. Thank you.